welcome back to Fantasy Knits, uh, a traveling knitter. This is chapter 7? I really should remember what episode I'm on, uh, but whatever. It's a chapter, and I honestly don't have that much to show you. So I had kind of been pushing back this episode because I didn't have anything done. Um, I've been really busy with work, very busy, <laughs> uh, and very tired <laughs> because of work, and yeah, I, I also work out a lot, not that I like to do it, but I feel like I have to, so I typically don't, like if I'm home, I don't get home until maybe 7 o'clock, then I make dinner, and at that point, uh, I go to bed, because I have to get up at 6.30 to go to work. So yeah, I have an eight to five job. All my friends have nine to five. I wish I had that. But, um, yeah, so really there's only one quest that I'm gonna show you and I've shown it to you uh, numerous times. So it's not new, something you have seen but they are my socks that were supposed to be for June. So I don't remember if I showed them to you, but here is one pair finished. And this toe looks like super weird, <laughs> I think, especially on camera. Uh, I wanna say this is Nitpick's Stroll. I found it in this, the big bag that I did. Uh, I don't like. That the purple, the bag with all the yarn in that I like, took me an hour to go through all of it. So yeah, I found that and I thought it went really well. And as I was knitting this, I just had this like sinking feeling that I was not gonna have enough yarn to finish the second sock because this is how much I have left. That's how much I've done. Yeah, I'm not even done with the cup yet. So I just got kind of worried that I wouldn't have enough yarn and then I would have to undo this, which would drive me insane. So just in case, I am using this guy. So these are the Farmer McGregor socks. They are out of the Socktopus book, which is by Alice Yu. I'm really enjoying it. It looks really complicated, uh, but it it really isn't and of course my camera is like oh I don't want to focus but there it is doesn't the coloring look really good another reason why I didn't want to film um, I got light so I don't have this tint of orange because beforehand I was using this lamp that I had in college which I still have it's just, it's disintegrating like the plastic is literally breaking uh, and disintegrating into my hand so it's in the budget to replace that lamp, but so you can really see the colors. Yeah, it's like really nice green with some flecks of brown and then this toe really matches. It's, um, this yarn is a lot, it's not a lot, but it's thinner than this one, which is Knit Picks, uh, Knit Picks Hawthorne Fingering in the Laurelhurst colorway. This is thicker than this guy, which I want to say is Nitpick Stroll. So just keep that in mind. The two don't mesh super well together. And you can really see it where my toe connects to the sock because the sock's stitches... Okay, my hand just can't hold this straight. Yeah, so those the stitches are very... Not very, but they're bigger. So you can see that difference right there but on the foot side it's not as noticeable so yeah um i have a whole sock to go and it's basically the end of july and i just i can't i can't knit socks quick like everyone else seems to be able to so i just hope i get 12 by the end of the year i don't know maybe maybe not I've definitely been in a reading kick recently, and my other quest that I'm on is the cross-stitch project that I showed you before. 
Uh, it's this guy right here. Coffee brewed, fresh brewed. It's got a bunch of like coffee stuff on it. And it says that it's from, it's copyright by Lily in Val LLC. And I'm almost done guys. I'm so close to being done, but look how awesome it's looking. So my mom's birthday is next month, no, next month, next week. And my goal is to have this finished so I can mail it off on Monday. Uh, today is Saturday. So I want to get it done. And the only annoying thing is I'm going to run out of thread. So it basically looks like I'm done, right? The only thing I have left is this like curl for the E, but you have to back stitch around all of this lettering. So um, you can see that the the WED is brighter than the BRE part, and then espresso is really bright. So this is backstitched, that's backstitched, these two or three need to be, and then the full coffee needs to be backstitched. This is all I have left. So that's really frustrating, uh, and maybe that's why it was on clearance, because there's not enough in here. But lucky for me, uh, I actually have a whole like like skein like not even just the floss tube I have a whole ball of white hopefully it's the same color white we will find out um but yeah I just have to outline coffee oh and then I have a bunch of French knots I hate French knots I remember when I was in high school and I would cross stitch and if I had projects that had French knots in them one of my friends, she loved doing French knots. So I would give it to her and she would do all the French knots for me. I don't know. It's when I do French knots, they just don't turn out right. I even watched a video on it to, to uh, get my understanding of it to be correct, comprehensive, to get a better understanding of how to do a French knot. And I had been doing it wrong, so okay so then I tried it again today no didn't work so I don't know I hate them maybe I just won't do them it does add a lot so uh, where did the picture go where did I put the picture oh, right here can you see them uh, no what the heck they didn't put some of the French knots in that's funny when you see like uh, sample patterns and there's like a clear mistake uh, why do they do that so you can't even so they're supposed to be French Oop, there is the flash okay there's supposed to be French knots at the end of like the curls nope they forgot it's missing right there and there and then there's supposed to be some French cur or French curls uh, French knots here and here uh, nope they did not add them there so I don't know first things first I'll use up the rest of this thread it's this is um, just a brand new one so that's all I'm gonna have I probably it's probably not even enough to do the BRE part of the brood but I got to do that and um, in the last episode I showed you the northbound knitting yarn that I purchased and it came in like a bag like this. That's what I've been using for the project bag. I didn't realize that there are specific project bags for cross stitch and I'm kind of excited to try one. So I do want to get my hand on one and maybe try and sew one myself. I've been sewing project bags. I just sewed another one for my mom. Uh, it was supposed to be for Mother's Day and then it came undone because again, I'm new to sewing so not everything's perfect. So I fixed it and then I made her another one and then I'm gonna give her this uh, framed for her birthday. I already bought her my mom and I are going to Rhinebeck this year and um, my brother and I paid for her flight uh, to New York so that's kind of like her birthday gift already but I like crafting and 
I saw that cross stitch pattern and I was like, oh, it's perfect for my mom. And funny enough, two of my coworkers are huge coffee drinkers. Um, to the point where one of them got a tattoo uh, so that when he goes like this, it looks like he's drinking coffee. E yeah. <laughs> so I was thinking as like a surprise Christmas gift, I could make them uh, versions of it as well. It's not that, it's, it's not very time consuming just because it's all one color, which is really nice that it's all one color. So I thought maybe I could do like a white background and then do just a solid blue or something like that instead. But I really am liking the black and the white. It looks like a chalkboard, which might have been the purpose and the effect that they are going for. So either way, I'm pretty excited with that. Um, I'm hoping to have it done by tomorrow again so I can mail it out on Monday. Which I've been going to the post office a lot recently because I've been selling stuff on eBay. Um, I have a lot of stuff and I really need to get rid of some of it. Like, so I guess I didn't address that I'm in a new position and I'm in a position because <laughs> it looks like a disaster over by where I normally film. I moved my furniture around because I purchased a new TV stand. Um, I'm sick of the TV stand that I have. It gets so dusty so easily. The whole thing's open. I mean, it literally looks like something that you could buy when you're in college, which I bought it at Walmart for like 30 bucks or something. So I'm ready to get something new. I found something. Uh, it's going to get delivered in like two weeks. So I wanted to get my furniture situated so that when they brought it there wouldn't be like a problem with moving it and stuff and I'm excited for it because I'll be able to consolidate two pieces of furniture because right now I have um, a whole shelf for movies and video games and I could com I, I'll be able to combine it with the TV stand and it'll all just be one piece the TV stand is like fully enclosed so you're not going to see any of the cables and I'm really excited for that. Uh, and it's like a bluish teal, so it'll look really nice, I think. Okay, that's a lot of non-nitty things, but those are the quests that I'm currently on. Ooh, like sticking to the couch. But I did finish something. The ends aren't woven in yet, but that's normal. And it's my Raina shawl! Yes, it's finally finished! Oh, I'm so glad. And it, like, look at the border. It looks really good. So in the last episode when I was talking about that, I was like, oh, I'll probably just use half of it. Absolutely wrong. So I basically used all of it and I didn't even get the full repeat that I wanted to because I was worried I was gonna run out of yarn. So I'm a terrible judge of uh, how much yardage I need. And I mean, yes, the repeats were getting bigger, but I just, I don't know, I just wasn't thinking about how big the repeats were. Um, I think at the end, I had maybe 500 stitches on the needle. So here's the tip. And it's, it's wider than my wingspan, so here's my hand and then I've got all of this still. So uh, it's gonna be uh, amazing. So when I wear it, it's gonna be pretty big. It'll be really nice and warm and I really like that, you know, it's, it's pretty. So let me like stand up a little. Oh, this is gonna get awkward. Uh, maybe I'll just kind of squat on this couch. Uh. Okay. Yeah, so I really like the colors that are coming out, the, the as I've been calling it, the Lisa Frank colors, but the gray slash light dark is doing a really good job of toning it down and making it very wearable, I think. Um, so I'm really excited about this. I'm much more excited now than I was when I just had this color. So this is gonna be really nice and warm. So 
That's my Raina shawl. It's a free pattern on Ravelry. And like always, I'm just terrible with remembering people's names. So I will have all of the information down below in the show notes with who designed it. Um, I remember it's something that I don't think I pronounced correctly. The second project is something that you haven't seen uh, and it is a dishcloth so it's not that big of a deal. But I'm working on Christmas presents already. I try to get uh, a head start. Uh, basically once 4th of July rolls around I start looking for Christmas gifts. And my old roommate, uh, who's my co-worker, I'm done with her Christmas gift now as of finishing this dish class. I might make another one, but this is amazing. So this stitch pattern, it's all bumpy. So let's, there you go. So you can really see that. So it's going to be really good for scrubbing. And I love this color. Look how amazing it is. It's so awesome. Um, I legit threw the tag away. Uh, so this is the, the giant skein of it. It's Bernat um, cotton something and I got it at Meyer. but I love this colorway. So it's a very natural cream tan color and the flecks are a rusty orange, a very deep, not well some places deep, olive green and then a coffee brown. So it, oh, it's so pretty looking. I love this. I would wear this as a sweater, but the dish rag came out so nice. I'm loving it and I'm planning to make some for myself. It's, it's great. So the stitch pattern was um, to make the bumps, you crochet a chain and then you crochet one, three, one, three, one, three, one, three, and then you crochet, um, single crochet back, and then one, three, one, three, one, you same thing. So the ones kind of tuck the three, uh, together. So if you're a crocheter, I think you know what I mean by just saying ones and threes. Uh, but it's, I always read it as triple crochet, but it's, I think it's actually called treble, which is kind of confusing because I think of like treble clef like for music but either way so you've got a single crochet and then a treble crochet so the treble crochet gets squished and that's what causes the bump and they naturally all kind of bump to the same spot i had a couple that weren't like for whatever reason there's no bump here uh, and i think i just crocheted it tighter i don't know but you can kind of pull it out to make that bump so yeah I'm completely done with her Christmas gift. I found this adorable flower um, dish and so it's a big flower and then there's a little flower on, that's on top of it that's kind of glued down uh, and it's kind of like a chips and dip but the dip bowl is very small so I want to say it's more for um, like veggie dip but I also found these little flower plates and flower bowls so I kind of put them all together as a set so you can use this chips and dip with lots of different dips um, and like the flower plates you can put hummus on and uh, got made her this guy. I was thinking of making a hot pad as well or like a tea towel, like a longer towel. Uh, she just moved into a new house. I helped her paint one weekend. Yes, like literally I went over Saturday and Sunday and spent maybe a total of 12 hours helping her paint, which it's a lot of time, but it was nice. I know um, I appreciated it when my friend came over and helped me paint part of my apartment. So I felt, you know, it's, it's always good to help out. So uh, her Christmas gift is done and I feel super good about it because it is a uh, still a week away to the end of July and I'm done with one person already. I'm actually done with two. I'm done with my brother. Uh, I highly doubt my brother is ever going to watch these podcasts so I feel no shame in talking about what I got for him. I don't know if this is the same uh, with your family 
But boys, once they get above the age of like 14, are the hardest person to buy for. All, like, my two brothers are not very big into sports. So it was never like I couldn't go buy them some sort of sports paraphernalia because they're not going to care really about it. Uh, and the only sports my middle brother did was golf and even that he wasn't so big into. And then my youngest brother does, he, he does band like I do, but I don't like, I loved getting books with, that I could play. Uh, like Disney music and things like that. Like I love that stuff, but I don't think he does because I bought him some and I don't know if he's ever used it. So and that's fine. It's whatever. So they're, they're very hard to buy for is what I'm trying to get at. And so I want to say in maybe April, I was just flicking through, yeah, flicking through Facebook and I saw this advertisement for these sunglasses that are, I'm pretty sure they're Bluetooth, to your phone so you can listen to music. But it doesn't have anything that goes into your ear. So the sunglasses, you know, they sit like normal and then they transmit the sound through your skull. I don't know how it works really. I've watched the video, it's some sort of brain, not brain, a bone technology with vibrations and stuff but you can hear the music so clear by just putting these sunglasses on so kind of the whole point there's like yarn dust in the air the whole point is so you can still hear people because your your um, ears aren't blocked by any speakers or anything but you can listen to music you can listen to phone calls with sunglasses. I thought that was brilliant. Absolutely brilliant. So I believe they were on Kickstarter and um, the Kickstarter was already fully funded by the time I saw it. And so I went ahead and ordered them. I only ordered one because they are kind of pricey. I mean, it's a Bluetooth sunglasses that play music through your bones. I, they're probably going to be expensive, but if you buy them right now, they, you do get a discount. And if you had to purchase them on Kickstarter, you got a significant discount on them, but I missed out. So, um, I got that for my brother and they are not going, I, they're actually shipping out next week. I believe, I believe they're shipping out next week, but, um, check them out. They're called Zungle or Zungle, I think it's Z-U-N-G-L-E, or maybe it's just Z-U-N-G-E. Either way, just type in um, or look up sunglasses that play music through Bones, <laughs> I guess, and be impressed. They look awesome. I mean, the sunglasses themselves look awesome. So yeah, that was a very long rant on non-knitting things, but that's okay, I think. Everyone can have suggestions for boy gifts. Or yeah, so I'm done with two people for Christmas. I'm pretty excited. Something I wanted to talk about uh, are knickknacks, or knitting knickknacks. And one of the things I want to talk about is this little guy. Uh, I love this new light. Okay, when I like stare at it, it hurts my eyes and then I can't see. But looking in the viewfinder, you can even see these are scissors. I don't think that would have worked over there. Oh, and they open apart really wide. So these scissors uh, were called Little Gems. I found them in a shop in Philadelphia? Philly? I think so. Oh, all this travel just blurs together. I'm pretty sure it was Philly. Uh, and I want to say I might have even talked about it in a video. And I might have even talked about these guys. But I love these. I want to get another pair. These uh, scissors are flight approved because of the blade length. So the blade length needs to be shorter. It's like 
10 centimeters, I think, is what it has to be. Does that make sense? 10 centimeters? Maybe, maybe not. I, it was 10 something and 10 inches just seems too long. So I want to say it was 10 centimeters. These say they are Kime Scott designs, but I remember it was called Little Gems and they were like eight or $10, which for a pair of scissors, you might think, oh, that's kind of pricey, but these are really nice. I really like these and they are really nice to travel with. They're just nice to have in general to just snip your uh, ends off. What I typically do when I travel though, when I don't have this little guy, is I use nail clippers and I use that to trim the ends off. So just a little tip, if you don't have scissors, uh, if you have some nail clippers, uh, those will work as well. So just wanted to recommend these little guys because I've been really enjoying them. Now, the last thing I want to talk about are the additions to Smaug's Trove. I'll just bring these over. I bought these in a yarn store called Elgin Knitworks. Elgin is a town in Chicago. It's uh, kind of like suburbs of Chicago. I've been there before and I have purchased yarn there before. I get the newsletters uh, and I went and visited my parents because I was up in Chicago for work and they were doing a sidewalk sale so I asked my mom if she wanted to go she said yes so we went and I spent way more money than I had planned to spend so I purchased oh, these guys and I bought this before Tosh Marina light two skeins in optic and then Tosh Marina Light two skeins in Light Turn, which is a grayish color. These two together. And this is going to be a sweater. And it is a sweater, let me pull it up. It's a sweater by Hohi Locatelli. The project I plan on making is Japan Sleeves by Hohi Locatelli, which, uh, Maybe that doesn't, there we go. So it's going to be this guy. That's these guys. And I, yeah, turn is gray, blue, and maybe just a hint of purple in the background. I can't wait to get to that. And each of these guys cost me 23 bucks. And I also just fell in love with this. And this is Malabrigo Sock Light of Love. And it is a bright pink. Now, it's tonal. It's coming off brighter on screen, which I don't know if that's a bad thing. And I was just wanting to do like these guys together. Some sort of shawl with this bright orange. And this is a Madeline Tosh Unicorn Tail in the neon peach colorway which I actually have a full skein of this in my stash but I wanted to do um which I was kind of wanting to do with the bendy arrow but I'm wanting to do some sort of pink shawl with tan and then a bright pop of orange I thought would be awesome for the bendy arrow my plan is to do the neon peach as the color and then tan as the secondary color and maybe a navy potentially a navy. Yeah, so the unicorn tail was $4.55 and the Malabrigo sock was $19. I feel like a lot of people on their podcast don't talk about how much money they spent on the yarn, but I feel like that's an important part. Um, we all know we spend a lot of money on that yarn. It, it, I mean, it does add up, but it's fun, it's a hobby, and you get something out of it at the end, which is something different from, you know, I spend a lot of money on video games. I like video games. Do I get anything out of it other than entertainment? No, there's no product at the end of it. Um, I get achievements uh, that gets attached to my gamers tag, which is my gamer score, which I really like. But with knitting, you get something at the end, which is really awesome. 
that's what's new to Smaug's Trove. And this brings us to the last segment, which is called A Novel Idea, where I recommend a book to you. So the book I want to recommend is actually a series, and I'm going to pull it up on my phone. The series is called, oh, I, because I said series, Siri thinks I'm talking to it. Okay, the series is called These Broken Stars, and there we go. And I listened to the first two on audiobook, and I am listening to the third one on audiobook right now. Uh, These Broken Stars is the Starbound, oop, I am blurry. These Broken Stars is the first uh, book in the Starbound trilogy, yeah, the, which is by Amy Kaufman and Megan Spooner. And the trilogy, it's like a fantasy sci-fi style and sort of dystopia kind of series. and. I didn't expect to like it as much as I, I, I am. Uh, when I listen to audiobooks, I listen to audiobooks that, um, you know, I'm going to like, but not necessarily love to the point where I want to read them. Uh, if it's a book I really enjoy, then I would, I'm going to read it over listening to the audio version because I love reading. So I was pleasantly surprised with this book. I really enjoyed it. Um, the whole kind of, the premise of the first book which it's not giving away much uh, when I say this because I'm pretty sure it's on the back blurb. So the you're you're way far into the future. Earth, the humans on Earth have have dispersed. You've um, gone on to other planets, um, other ships, and things like that. So Earth, I don't I don't know if Earth actually even exists anymore. I think Earth dies. But that's beside the point, like that's not even in the book. But all the people don't go, they don't live on Earth anymore. And when they talk about like ancient times, they are addressing things that are technically our future, but would have been way far into their past and they still lived on Earth. There is a large corporation that uh, is built, built, builds this giant, giant ship. I kept liking it to Wally, -E, the Axiom ship. Uh, so in the book it's called the Icarus, but for whatever reason I'm like, oh, the Axiom <laughs> from Wally. -E. Uh, it's a it's a large ship that they essentially live on. You know, you could live on the ship, uh, but it gets pulled out of hyperspace and everybody dies except for two people. And of course those two people are our main characters. I mean gotta be predictable somewhere. So if you follow these two characters as they are trying to survive and figure out you know what the heck happened. A giant ship like that shouldn't be able to be pulled out of hyperspace. So you know we deal with all of that and then the second book takes place on a different I want to call them stars but they're planets on a different planet with two different two other characters and you you basically spend all your time with them and then with the third book you have two new characters uh, and I'm halfway I'm a little over halfway done with it but the the four characters from the previous uh, books are, are all there so it's like a conglomerate of all six of your main characters and it is really enjoyable I really like it um, obviously each character each books main characters male female they get together of course it's a teen romance it's not paranormal but it's you know in that the the fantasy teen realm so you're always going to have of uh, the obvious you guys are going to get together it's not instant no, not by any means um i think it's it's done really well and i really enjoyed it now i don't want to talk that much more about it because it does give away quite a lot but suffice it to say, I am really enjoying it to the point that I'm about to finish the third one and I picked up the novella on my Kindle and I hope to finish that uh, tonight. No, not tonight, it's too late. But I'm really looking forward to it and their names are really cool. The main character's name 
the male in the first book is called Tarver, which I thought was a really unique name. Second one, it's Flynn, which Tangled Flynn Rider. Not that unique anymore, um, but it's still a really good name. And then in the third book, the guy's name is Gideon. I, I've never met anyone named Gideon, and I actually did not know how it was pronounced until Charlie is so cool like on YouTube uh, made a song about his cat who is called Gideon. True story. Not, I mean, true story about the song, but true story that I did not know how to pronounce Gideon. I thought it was like Gidgen. Maybe it is pronounced Gidgen somewhere, but uh, on my audiobook it's pronounced Gideon. Alright, so that is the end of this really strange chapter where I don't discuss a lot about knitting, but I sure talk a lot about random stuff. And if we want to get even more random, I ran a 10k today. And I did really good. I thought there was a bug on the wall for a second. It's not a bug. It's a screw. And with that, I'm going to talk to you guys later.